Purchasing your first HF station is probably, for a beginner anyway, a bit of a puzzle. What do you choose? Now, of course, you can spend an awful lot of money, but you can also work on a reasonable budget. What I'm going to do in this video is to just show you how you could set up a simple HF ham radio station on a reasonable budget, give you some idea of what antenna you might want to use, and give you some idea how well it will perform. So let's take a look at a budget class beginner's HF ham radio station. So let's start with the antenna. We can have a dipole, simple dipole, which is very easy to make. You just need a piece of wire cut in the centre and connected to a piece of coax cable. The inner conductor goes to one side and the sheath goes to the other side. At the bottom of this page, I'll put here, you can see the formula for finding the length of that dipole in feet for any particular frequency. The problem with the dipole is it's single band. Now, it will work and it will work very well, but uh, you probably want to move around and be a bit more agile and try different bands. You could use what is known as an end fed half wave using a 49 to 1 unun. Now, I've done a video on this, I've done several videos on this, and at the bottom of this uh, video, below the uh, video, I'll put in text some links to the videos I've done on NFED half waves. The advantage of the NFED half wave is it covers several bands and it's very easy to erect. But it still doesn't cover as many bands as something like the half size G5RV. Now I've done a video on that um, and a very recent video actually and I'll put a link below this video again to the half size 5RV. The attraction of that antenna is it's very compact it's pretty easy to make and it covers a lot of bands. You can cover seven bands, um, even if you've got a garden that's only 40 foot long. It's a simple wire antenna. And as I say, I'll put a link below this video so you can actually read up on it. So that antenna will give you a, a good range of bands that uh, some of them are open uh, during the day and some of them are open day and night. And uh, if you watch the videos, you'll get the, uh, get the idea. So, the antenna is the important thing in any ham radio station. Without an antenna, you don't radiate, and without radiation, you don't work anybody. So it's worth spending a bit of time on, on that. But you don't need to actually purchase an HF antenna. You can make your own. You need to purchase some wire and so forth. But again, watch the videos, and that will tell you all about them. So the radio that I've uh, selected is the Zigu X6100. Now, I know this radio pretty well. I've used it for over a year now. And one of the reasons I've selected it is because it's got a lot of features. Uh, it's not overly expensive as radios go. And it does have a built-in antenna matching unit, which you will see later on in this video how important that is. The Zigu 6100 uh, is made in China, but it is made by a reputable firm. They've been around for quite a while. They make a range of equipment. You can, of course, select other radios. There are other makes around. But I would suggest that you consider something like this because, first of all, it's stood the test of time. It's a reliable radio. Secondly, as you'll see later on, it's got an excellent internal matching unit. And if you're going to use something like the G5RV, you do need a matching unit to cover all the bands. As I say, there are other models. Some of the more expensive and larger and more powerful base stations, as good as they are, the antenna matching unit won't match something like the G5RV. You'd have to have an end-fed half-wave. The advantage of this transceiver is, as I say, it's a budget-class transceiver. It gives you up to 10 watts out, which suits um, a lot of new beginners because they've probably got a, a limit of power on their license. And also, it can be used as a portable transceiver as well. So it has many uses. So I've, I've chosen this one because I think it offers excellent value for money. And I think that um, it will demonstrate how it's not a bad idea for 
your first HF transceiver if you're working on a budget. Right, let me just run through the test setup. <clears throat> We've got a half size G5 RV. That's feeding down 12 meters of RG58 coax cable going into the uh, SWR power meter, and that in turn then goes into the antenna socket on the Zigu XG6100. The power meter will enable me to see what power's coming out, hopefully, provided that the Zigu will actually match the antenna on each band, and that's one of the tests, see whether it will match, whether the tuner will actually match the uh, antenna, because there's fairly high reactance at the end of that antenna on some bands. So I can see whether the uh, uh, transceiver is doing its job. Hopefully if it is, we'll get full power indicated coming out of the Zigu 6100. Now at the end of each test on each band, I'll show you the VSWR that I measured using a separate antenna analyzer. I'll show you the total loss on the coax, which accrues from the inherent loss on the coax cable, plus the loss that uh, builds up through VSWR. So you get the total loss. And then at the bottom, I'll show you what the net power output of that antenna would be on each band. So let's go ahead and uh, see how it all works out and see uh, how this little transceiver performs. We're on 40 meters and I trigger the ATU to tune the transceiver. And now you can see that we've got full power going into the antenna. Now on 30 meters, trigger the tuner. It tunes. And now we see that we've still got full power, although we've got quite a high VSWR there, but we get full power into the antenna. On 20 metres we trigger the tuner units and we've got a very good match actually, so no problem in getting full power output on this band. On the 17 metre band we trigger the matching unit and uh, we've got a fairly high VSWR there, but nevertheless we're still getting full output power into the antenna. On the 15 metre band, we switch on the tuner unit and uh, we've got a modest VSWR, but we're still getting full power into the antenna. Now on the 12 metre band, switch the machine unit in and uh, well, we've got a modest uh, VSWR again, but once again, we're still getting full power into the antenna. And finally on the 10 metre band, uh, switch the matching unit in and we see that we've actually got a very good SWR. The antenna works very well on the 10 metre band, which is not surprising for the half size G5 RV. By the way, when I said full power into the antenna, I should have said full power into the antenna feeder because the loss occurs on the coax feed to the antenna. There is an inherent loss in coax cable. There's not much you can do about it. Everybody suffers with the same. Um, but the VSWR does also add to the loss and you've seen in those figures. But it's very interesting actually that at no time did we even approach, well we did approach, but at no time did we exceed a maximum of 2 dB loss. Now to give you some, put, put dB into perspective, 1 dB actually is the smallest change in level, signal level, audio level, whatever, you can hear. And in fact, if you, were to change, if you were to change your power on the HF bands by 1 dB, nobody would be able to tell the difference. In fact, you've really got to have a change of about 3 dB before anybody can really notice the difference. 
The reason is that a dB is a very small change in signal level and on the HF band signals are never stable, they're going up and down in level anyway. And in the past when I've done tests it's very difficult to tell even a 3 dB change. Yes, there is a change and you can just about hear it. And if your signal is marginal, in other words, it's just on the noise, it will make a difference. But when we're talking about 1 dB or 1.5 dB change, it's neither here nor there. The chances are that the station will hear you whether you've got the 0 dB loss or you've got 1.5 dB loss, so don't worry about it. Very impressed about the way that that transceiver matching unit matches because there's a lot of transceivers match the matching units built in will match sort of a 1.5 to 2.5 3 to 1 VSWR but above that they really struggle this transceiver seemed to cope with virtually anything it was it was uh, matching VSWRs approaching 6 to 1 which is quite respectable the other interesting thing is that we always think don't we we're always brought up to think that a 5 to 1 VSWR is well, it's, it's, you, you can't use it. I mean, you, the losses are so great. Well, we've seen that a 5 to 1 VSWR still translates into a loss of less than 2 dB. So don't get too hung up about VSWR and dBs. Yes, it is important to try and get your station as efficient as possible. But if you are stuck with a 3 to 1 VSWR for whatever reason, it shouldn't stop you making contacts. So that's my take on an HF transceiver for the beginner. I think it's excellent value. It does come in the budget class. I know that it's, you know, you, you've got to spend some money, but compared with what you could spend, now you could argue, okay, well, look, why don't you go for a 100, 100 watt transceiver because you're probably going to um, need a 100 watt transceiver because your license uh, limits will change. Well, that's fair comment. That's fair comment. But not everybody is in that position to afford a 100 watt transceiver. You can go second hunt, hunt second hand. Um, that's another option. But what I've tried to do here is to put together a simple station. Uh, in, this, in this case, I've chosen a half size G5RV because it's so agile and because with this particular transceiver, it works so well. There are many other options. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been of use to you. I've had great fun actually doing these measurements and I've even surprised myself. That's saying something. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.